M0FXB, welcome to my channel. Let's set the PA bias for the RS918. And as you can see, this one is the orange button version. So first thing we'll do is put a couple of settings into the menu. So press the F1 button. Then we've started off at standard menu at the top. To show the menu, you turn the RIT key. And it shows everything inside the menu. Scroll down with the RIF knob. That's the middle knob here. Keep going until you see, it's quite low down. There it is there. See it says here, RXTX frequency X late. Just make sure that is set at minus 12 kilohertz. Many are set like that by default, just make sure it is. To save that, just hold down the EXT, the F1 button, it saves the settings. It will say save settings. Okay, now exit again. Now actually, let's scroll back to the top using the middle button. Keep going up. And when it says hide, you turn the third button, RIT button, left. And it, that's just beginning place. Now we want to go into the configuration menu here. I'll also show you that we've changed the power level to 0.5 watts. We've kept it low. And we also have a dummy load connected to this device. To change the power, just press the PA button here. Look here until it says... 0.5 watts. Next, we're going to turn down to PA configuration and click show. Turn the third button so that we see the full list. And just turn it and it says show. And the first one at the top, we want that tune power level as per TX power. So whatever you set on the screen is going to be your TX power. So that's good. And to change that, once you're there, just turn this knob. Turn it until you say as per TX power. Remember to save as you go. So you just exit. Save settings. You've got to hold it down. Remember that. Just do that again. Hold it down. It's saving settings. Okay. Let's keep going down. Keep going down further until we see reduce power on low bands and you want that on okay so once you get to it where the white is now turn that and you want that on not off okay again save next we're going to go to pa bias and at the moment mine is set to 44 now you only are able to change that when you're actually transmitting now, the next thing is connecting our amp meter. So on the side, we've got the power coming out. I know it's a black cable, but the very tip of the cable, I've marked it with this red tab, and I've connected it to the negative terminal that goes to the com on my meter here. And you can see it's drawing 0.32. The red, and I'll show you what, it, what it's plugged into, plugged in here in the 10 amp one here, the big one there at the top. Once you connect that and then you connect the other end to your power supply in the positive, yeah, you create the circuit. And so it's drawing 0.32 milliamps. And just to be clear, the negative cable is going straight from the radio to the power supply. Just here, the left cable that's going into negative. The only cable that you, you know, you effectively splice it and then you put in the terminal here, the probe, and that's going into COM. So it's in line. It's actually in line. So we'll, well, we've held an exit just to make sure everything's saved. Go back to menu. Go down to the PA config. PA config here, and then just turn this knob. 
go down we've re we know we've re done the reduce power thing going down to the bias so what I'm going to do I'm going to change the bias to zero and I've decided to use the CW key the way John N5ID did on his video which I will put in the description so the power's 0 0.5 watts we've got a dummy load on we're going to key up now the amp meter will change I won't show you that yet I'm just going to key up and just change the 44 to 0 using the turning the RIT knob that's gone to zero. Okay. I'll show you the amp meter now. And I'm because I've changed it, I'm getting the error now. Watch this. So it's on zero and it's showing yeah, 42, but we need it at nine nine hundred five hundred higher. So we need it at ninety-two. So what we're gonna do is turn this when we're keying uh, until it says 92 so we'll key it's showing 42 and now try to get my hand out the way and we're going to turn the bias which is changing here the, the orange figure until the amp meter starts to show 92 so 500 higher than when it was set on zero let's go down one more we'll leave it at 90 for now we'll let go and we'll save so now i mean you know, I'd like to get it exact, but if we key, we're on USB 0 0.5 watts, 88, so we could go up another notch. Now there is, I noticed when I was looking at this, we can only change when we're actually keying, so just go one notch up. But actually, do you know what? That's the same as what it was set at before I got it. So it looks to me like they are setting these up before you get them. Just show that again. 91. So we're happy with that for now. Let's exit from that. We held down to save settings. If we exit, hopefully you won't get any weird messages on this now. It will give you a message on reboot sometimes if there's a problem with the bias. Okay, and I did notice there is a CW one. So let's go up to that up here. So we'll go up. Turning the RF knob upwards. And this time we'll set it onto CW. We'll have to come out first. Let's exit. We haven't exited it properly, have we? CW, keep the power low. I do like the touch screen. Back into the menu. CW bias. See the way? It allows you to change it. So at the moment, it's showing when I key one, if you look at the meter, 1.26. So let's set it to zero. Remember we're on a dummy load. Okay, dummy load set at zero, and when we key now, it's actually showing 96, and we're meant to be one 500 higher than that. So that would effectively mean that we'd have to do it, now correct me if I'm wrong on this, to 1,400. So I've set it on 52, it was on 50 when I got it. And look, 1040, so it, 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 it was quite close when I got it. So we'll hold down exit. 
to save that setting. And you know, if you've only started viewing now, remember that the live coming from my HF918 has been effectively split and the amp meter is, is, is in the middle of that, reading the amps. And it's set there, as you can see, 10. I've plugged it into the 10 amp there and the com there. I'll just show you here. If I unplug any of these, it will break the circuit, everything will turn off. So it's an inline reading when you're doing amps. So we can exit out of there for now. Another interesting thing I found is that these screws here, these four, are actually screwed into the transistors. We go back into PA BIOS, go menu. Remember, you hold it saves. Briefly, you go in, and we'll just look, look at the PA BIOS and look. CW is now 52. We'll go down PA BIOS 44. Now, if I've made any, if I've done anything incorrect, message me and tell me. I'll redo it because I, I am a novice learning how to use my device. Now, the amp meter that I've had for years, about four years, is this is about 25 pound and just does everything, works really well. It's the TAC Life DM01M and it does have a torch, which I really like. Right, what we're going to do now is just remove the meter from inline and we're going to have a look at setting the, the power levels. I use an ATU100M tuner, it works great. They're about 70 pound, built-in battery. You don't even have to push the tune button, it just tunes. But we have got, at the moment, our uh, dummy load connected, so there's no RF involved. So next we'll set the power, so we'll go menu. Again, the PA menu. Turn the RIT. I'm going to go down to the power. So let's do, it's the 5 watt power adjust. We'll do 40 meters first, that's what I use the most. Um, I'm going to have to rely on the power that's shown on this. So let's just give that a go. We'll just hit the tune button. And it's showing 0.5, but we I think we need to turn it to 5. So let's change the power to 5 and start again and we're showing it's quite noisy but after making sure that it was 5 and I didn't hold down to save um, so 5 look it's showing 6 so we just go down a touch just so we get it to what it's meant to be that's a bit too low we're changing the white one here, 40 meters. We're on 40 meters. Nearly there. Eight. I think that's near enough. Okay. And then you just do each one. So we'll do another one. So we'll exit out of that just to save. Better stop tuning and then exit. Let's do another one. Let's do, I don't really use 80 to be honest. I use 20. So we'll go down to 20, 5 watts, we'll hit the tune, actually, change the band first, Twenty, five watts, tune, and you can hear the, the, the SWR trying to change. Uh, it's not 5 watts, so we need to just change that a sec. I think the reason it was going when I do tune is because I've told it to do to go to low power, so I just need to come out of that setting. So you go back on the PA bias, and it was at the top, wasn't it? There it is there. Reduce power on low bands, so I'll turn that off. Hold and exit. I found it there, it is there, tune power level, and that should be at as TX power. So let's hold and exit. I wonder why I never saved that setting. 
So let's now try again. 20 meters. We're going to go hit the tune. It should be 5 watts. 20 meters, 5 watts. But it's 7. So we're just going to reduce that a couple of clicks. And so on and so on. You get the idea. Hold and exit. Once we stop tuning, hold and exit. Save the setting. So that's the PA bias and the power adjust just on a couple of bands that I use there. But I mean, you're meant to do them all, of course. And then you can do it on full power as well. Look, if we do 40, full power, let's change the power to full. And then we'll go into TX. And it's showing 15. It's not bad, really. It's about right. And again, if you want to change one, then just change it. Go to, there it is there, 20 meters. Showing 17. If we just go down back, back one click. And then once you're happy what you've got, stop the transmit and then hold an exit. So let's close these menus. Going up, turning the RF knob till you see the words hide and then just turn the hide up one there and that shuts the menus okay so they're all shut and now we're going to go to config turn the RIT to reveal and we're going to go down to keep going down until we see frequency calibration okay Get the power really low. Just press the PA button. So yeah, you could try different ways of checking your frequency. I've got, I do have the analyzer there, but this is on 14 megs. Microphone selected there. It says mic 80, which is quite high, but let's just test it and then we'll end the video and you'll see down here Ooh, as you can see massive feedback because they're so close together on test with my other devices i can hear myself clearly when i'm on the same frequency so i'm not changing anything minus 4.1 ppm but yeah this is just a novice learning showing you how i'm how i'm doing things there are lots of gadgets here to tinker with and learn how to use thanks for watching my channel bye for now RS918, I think they're excellent devices. And I do think if you want to do the firmware upgrade, upgrades and get the best out of your device, it's probably better to go for the MCH model, okay? Because that will take all of the firmware updates that are coming out from uh, bespoke people like Nazir, and thank you very much, Nazir. If you want one that is, that's got a built-in battery that will pretty much works out the box, if you ask me, um, then um, I like the orange button one because I can take it anywhere I don't have to bring a power supply as long as I've got an antenna cut to size it's just going to work and of course 705 is a fantastic device bye for now 73